in the round of service. So please give it up. to the revolution that we need. We have set the world free from what the world could be and have turned this world into a mockery with poverty as its property. While some convey as rich and others as poor, there is one fact that we cannot ignore that we are in, at the end of a tunnel with one exit door. Change. Change what? Change who? Change me? Change you. Change what is strange and deranged and bring it out so that we can stand the same. That's just a little snippet. I wrote that poem when I went here. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> say thank you, um, Annalie, for reaching out, because I do enjoy speaking, and I do enjoy and inspiring, especially you, and uh, I saw a lot of you guys at the We Day yesterday, and it's kind of, the speech kind of touches along the lines of what that was talking about, but I'm going to put a little spin to it, and um, so I was delighted when I was asked, and I'm just going to share some things, you know, that kind of helped me along my journey, because I was in you guys' seats not too long ago. Now, I'm not going to go into depth. I'm gonna just give a brief intro. So my name's Evan Cook, as she said, I went here, I went and played football at East Orange University. I graduated from there in 2013. I worked as a police officer for a couple years, and now I'm back here at Hayward because I felt like it is um, a mission of mine to come out here, touch you guys' hearts and minds, and inspire you to be, to kind of redirect the current energy that this world is traveling in. So, so I've learned through the years that life, it is what, you make. Life's what you make it. You've probably heard that saying before. You probably hear it all the time. But what usually doesn't come attached with that saying is uh, how do you make it? You know, how the tools that you're not given the tools to access the power that lies within us that literally allows you to make life what you want. So we've been told and we've been taught this and we see this every day that life is about material possession. Life is about uh, what materials of possession we can acquire through a given time. So you're told to come to school, right? As you guys are here for fitness, I hope. <laughs> come to school, and every you leave school, go off to a good college. Whenever you graduate a good college, go and get you a nice job. Whenever you get you a nice job, have a family, save up, you know, and then save up for retirement, get these cool little gadgets and toys and stuff like that, and then uh, hopefully you leave it all to your kids when you're on your deathbed. Now, remember what I said. Life is what you make it. Doesn't that sound like someone else's script? Doesn't that sound like someone else is telling you what to do? Someone else is, is kind of writing your life for you. And this is kind of what I've seen going through high school and even college. And some people even define that life as success. But I can tell you guys that it's really not success. Society has been shaped around that mentality, and we find ourselves in a peculiar situation in society right now because uh, that way of living is starting to eradicate itself. That way of living is starting to self-destruct. Um, we are growing further apart from one another. Um, we are not looking out for our brothers and sisters like we're supposed to. And so I'm going to backtrack a little bit. So I'm going to break this down. I'm going to give you four lessons. There's going to be four lessons within the service, and then I'm going to get into leadership. Okay, so the first lesson, and if you guys want to write this down, if you guys just want to remember it, that's up to you. So if you want to write it down, give you a time to gather your pen and pencils. So, like I said, this, this way we're told to live, uh, and these, this life we're told to lead uh, is to find a success or happiness. We think that this is what happiness is, but I don't find true happiness. I think true happiness is this, and this is lesson one. True happiness comes when you are doing what you love, with who you love, in all aspects of life. 
Let's say one more time for our writers. True happiness comes when you are doing what you love, with who you love, in all aspects of life. So this doesn't just mean your job, this means your family. This means your friends. This is happiness, when you're doing what you love and who you love in all aspects of life. And this right here is the building block of knowing how to truly live. So we have grown up taught to compete. Everything is competition. I may be able to acquire more material possession than you. You may be able to acquire more material possession than I. Same for you. You may go out and be richer than her. You may go out and be richer than him. You know, but what is this really? What is this really? What is money really but a small object? What is an iPhone? What is all these things that we value, that we place our, our time and energy into? What is it? It's nothing but a small object that we base our entire life on. So life is not based on what you get. It's not based on what you acquire. It's based on what you are able to go out and give. And not just give in a physical sense. I'm not cool if I can just pull out $100 and hand it to you. You know, that's not the cool thing. You know, it's based on what I can give you physically along with mentally, along with spiritually. Life is truly about our ability to serve one another because we will not go forward as a people if we cannot get along. And most people don't get along, why? Because we are not given the proper knowledge. We are not given the proper education on how to truly serve and help each other move forward in life. So, this is gonna sound funny. So lesson two is coming. And lesson two is serve yourself and you will serve others. And they're like, that sounds super selfish. <laughs> you know, how the hell do I serve myself? <laughs> serve yourself and you will serve others. And so I say that to say this. In order to know how to truly serve someone, you must first know how to serve yourself. Because there are, the universe is governed by 12 laws. And you can look these up, 12 universal laws. And the first law of these is oneness. And then the law of oneness states that everybody in the universe, everything in the universe is connected to one another. So I am connected to you. You are connected to me. You are connected to the sun. You are connected to the earth. Everyone and everything is connected and it all works like a clock. Okay, it all works and functions as one large system. So the same law that causes the sun to rise causes you to rise. Causes you to be successful. Causes you to grow. All right, so this law tells us everything in the universe connects and operates as one large system. If we keep ourselves intact, if we keep ourselves, I don't want to use the word pure, but if we keep ourselves in check, I'll say that. If we keep ourselves in check. Then your ability to serve others goes up, but, if you, but the law also works in the opposite. So if you aren't doing what it takes to enhance and build yourself up, you're going to, you're not going to be able to serve people. Okay, and so I'm gonna, later I'm gonna break down kind of the definition, my definition of service. But you're not gonna be able to serve people. And so, how do you serve yourself? How does this happen? Any papers? Anyone want to get? I'm sorry, it's a rhetorical question on the show. Yes. <laughs> so, how do you serve yourself? Treat yourself like a brand new car. And you're like, what are you talking about? What's your favorite car? How do you do that? <laughs> so I handed you a million dollars, you'll go out and buy a Jeep. Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different story. I don't know. So, I mean, money's, I just told you what yeah. money is. It's nothing. So, if you could just go get any car you want, what would you get? Roll. Here, I'll Roll. help you. How about a Corvette? Corvette? Rolls Royce. Rolls Royce. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> okay. Rolls Royce. How much do you think a Rolls Royce is worth? How much to think about? Uh, <laughs> 450000 Well, the, the most expensive one I've seen, brand new, yeah. is just original stock condition. That's this guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My car guy, okay. All right, so $450,000. All right, now what if I told you that you are that $450,000 car? You are that worth worth. Every day that you rise, every day that you wake up, you're given a set of keys. And this key is the breath of life. The keys you're given is, is breath, you know, because tomorrow's not promised. You can't even think about tomorrow, really, because it's not promised. You can go to sleep and not wake up. So each day you're given the gift of life, and it comes with your breath. And so your breath is the keys to go and start your end. And now you can go off and you can show all your friends, you know, hey, you know, I'm going to get a $450,000 car. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but if you got this car, though, how would you treat it? 
you know, keep it clean inside and out. I'm talking about the car wash, you know, it's Washington, so the rain's gonna wash the car on its own. But, you know, you're gonna keep it clean inside and out. You're gonna detail it, you're gonna keep up the physical maintenance on it. I would even bet that some of us would even open up the manual and read on how to keep this $450,000 clean. But remember, we are this car. We are this car. So each say words, give us that to you. So our bodies, it works in conjunction with our mind. So literally, what you think you create, what you think you create. So if you think positive thoughts, no matter the circumstance, positivity is going to come to you. If you think negative, negativity. And this is the seventh law of the universe. And it's called the law of attraction. So this law, law of attraction, it goes out, and the energy that we give off into the world is transmitted out. So you hear this as you reap what you sow, as well. You hear this as you get what you put in. Okay. So it's the same thing. It's just talking about the seventh form. So now, in order to create these type of positive thoughts, you have to kind of rediscover yourself. You kind of have to discover what your purpose, right? So lesson three then becomes, and this is the how. This is the how. How do you define yourself? How do you discover your purpose? And here's how. You challenge everything. Challenge everything you know to find out who you are. Challenge everything you know to find out who you are, and your purpose will jump right out at you. And you ask yourself, who am I? We're going to exercise later. You have to ask, who am I? Who are you? <laughs> so, I, so I have this nephew. I told this to the habit class. So I have this nephew. He's three. He's huge. He's like, you know what I'm saying? He's three. <laughs> but he's huge. He's a little nephew, right? And he's so funny because we're, we're from Oklahoma, so he talks to funny accent, but in a baby voice. And so he always comes up to me, he's like, hi, Uncle Evan. And uh, I just look at him and he's like, who are you? And he's like, who is you, Uncle Evan? I'm like, no, 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 who are you? And he don't know why I'm asking him this, but he's just kind of like, I'm Micah. That's what he's like, I'm Micah. And I'm like, who is you? Who is you, Uncle Evan? But anyway. So find your purpose. How do we do this? You become aware and knowledgeable about what you're learning and how it affects your life. You become aware and knowledgeable about what you're eating and how it affects your body. What you're reading and how it affects your mind. What you're thinking about and how it affects the people around you. This is how you find purpose. Everything around us, everything and everyone around us teaches us something. Because remember, we're all connected. We're all one. So if you come in the door with a bad mood, I'm going to feel that energy. And it can put me in a bad mood. Or maybe I can spark you to have a better mood. You know, it's going to work in the same because we are connected. And so, <clears throat> once you're able to uh, <coughs> grasp this concept, you're able to change the world around you and you'll be able to change the world of others. Just by your energy, just walking around having a great day. You'll be able to change your energy. It'll just come off of you like so much. To do these things, you'll find yourself being looked up to. And so this is the part, and this is what, as I transition into leadership. So, Whenever you get this uh, mentality, you get this newfound, remember you're an automobile, right? You're a nice, fine car. You're walking around like you're a Rolls Royce, right? You're walking around like you're a Bentley. I drive a Ford Explorer, but I call it the Bentley because it's my baby. Right? <laughs> it's kind of the first car I ever bought. <laughs> so this is the Bentley, you know, I just treat the crowd. And so I drive it with a big chest. <laughs> so this is how you walk around. You walk around with this big chest, and now people are going to start to wonder why. Why are you so confident? Why are you so happy? I'm sitting over here in misery. Misery loves company, right? Why are you so happy? I don't know. I don't know, so I'm gonna to wanna to ask why. And what does that make you? At that very moment, I ask you why. You become a teacher. You become a teacher. And teachers are leaders. Everyone teaches. Everyone leads one way or another, whether you like it or not, by your example, by your words, by your thoughts. You're a leader. You're leading people somewhere. There's people who look up to you and you don't even know. There's a kid I looked up to uh, when I went here. He was a special needs kid. He walked around. I'm not going <laughs> to like imitate his walk. His all get you because of a laugh. But he always had his head up. And that that uh, inspired me because he always had his head up. I was like, no matter what he's going through, he's forced to keep his head up. He's forced to be happy. He's forced to do that. And we walk around, we're given this free movement because, you know, we, we aren't special needs, but some of us anyway. And we walk around and we put our head down and we mope and things like this. And here's this kid. He's just walking around the hallways. He has his head held high. And I'm over here pissed off because I just lost a football game. So, doing these things, you become a leader. And that kid was a leader. He probably didn't even know. 
and changed my entire life. And so lesson four, life is about expression. So define yourself and define what fits in the parameters that you create. Life is about expression. Define yourself and what fits in the world. My brother said the realest thing to me whenever I first moved to Washington. He says, Evan, what you see through your eyes is your world. You literally create your world. I never forgot those words. Never forgot those words. I hope you guys never forget. And so now we're going to talk about leadership. Because leadership comes in many forms. But all leaders are made up of the same quality. And it's perfect because you guys have that poster of Martin Luther King Jr. Martin Luther King was an excellent leader. He was a great speaker. Had a great mobilizer. He was able to get whole communities up together and go march for a cause. He was able to move crowds with how he spoke. But, so was Hitler. You know, Hitler was a great leader. He was able to gather people up for a common purpose and do something you know, that many of us probably hate. So we're like, no, he's an awful person. Some people, you say Hitler's a great leader, little person for common. They're like, no, he's an awful leader. He's an awful person. Look what he did. Look what he did. Germany wouldn't be Germany if it wasn't Hitler. Despite his actions, who is an excellent leader, he's no different than Martin Luther King. But being a leader, and I say that to tell you this, that being a leader, you, you choose one or the other. So you're going to influence people in the positive direction, and you can get a million and two people to do something great, like we did yesterday. You get 180,000 kids in there to celebrate positivity and helping out and making change. And you can do the same thing on the other side. You can get 180,000 people to go out and practice hate. Same qualities as a leader. And so, me, myself, I've uh, brought leadership down to seven principles. And why the number seven is because seven is the number of chakras in our body. I don't know if you guys are ready for all of that, but it's chakras. They're in our body, and they're, what they are are energy centers in our body. And um, they are literally affected by our thoughts, our actions, and our service to others, and our service to ourselves. And these are something I really encourage you guys to go look up because this public school so we can't really talk like religious stuff like this. But this isn't religious at all. It's more of a spiritual thing. It's, and it's how you are. It's what makes you function as a person as human being. Uh, these chakras and how you keep them in mind. And so the seven things that I broke, um, what I believe leadership, or so what I believe leaders have. The first of these is humility. And so I define Google defines humility as a modest or low view of one's own importance, placing oneself behind a higher cause. Humility is what allows us to grow. Humility is, humility is like the soil to a growing plant. The second of these is gratitude. And gratitude is defined as a quality or feeling of being grateful or thankful for everything we have in life. I kind of do it in life. Third of these is knowledge. Knowledge, you know what that is. It's facts and information and skills acquired by a person through experience or education. You guys are coming to school to gain knowledge, but you're going to gain more knowledge with how you live your life. I learned this no knock on schools. You know, the teacher here and everything. No knock mm -hmm. on school. But I learned most of what I know outside of, outside of the classroom. I learned most of what I know surrounding myself with people who think like me, who challenged me to go open a book instead of picking up a video game. But Google something over this. But <laughs> so we kind of inspire each other to always keep growing and learning something new. And before we know it, and we didn't even notice this, but we we used to have these debates and conversations about everything, religion, um, politics, and whatever in the locker room. And this isn't what normal college kids talk about, and you guys will see when we get to college. But what I noticed about this was everyone started to come and listen. Everybody wanted to know what we were talking about. How do we feel about this? And then they would even jump on sides. And then we'd get more people to chime in and pitch in their interest. And then, and so to this day, people still contact me and they say, hey man, those conversations you used to have in the locker room were very inspiring. You're, you're this inspired this for me. You're that inspired that for me. And that was very humbling towards myself. And so the fourth of these is service. Now, service, as a touch, I didn't define it earlier, but I talked about it. So service is the selfless act of helping or doing something for someone as an act of appreciation. Serving others is serving yourself, because we are all are one. But 
key word to this whole sentence is an act of appreciation. So me and my wife, we have debates about service all the time because she thinks service is just her doing something nice for me. And you know, even though she doesn't want to. I'm like, no, man, it's not service at all. Like, anything, I can tell you don't want to really make me dinner. <laughs> so that's not that's not cool. So I'll order a pizza. But <laughs> So it's an act of appreciation. Now back to that hundred dollars that I gave you earlier. What does it mean? Now if I'm like, if I see you struggling, I'd be like, man, she really wants to give me hundred dollars. Here you go. I don't expect nothing out of you. I don't even expect a thank you. I do it from the bottom of my heart because I have, I have the ability to help. Same with giving a hug to a person who looks like they need one. Same with helping somebody else. Just listening to somebody talk who feels like they have something that they need to share with others or don't want to share. That service is the appreciation of the act that you're doing, not because you want something from it, not because you want something, not because some people hold doors just so they can hear the thing. That's not service. Hold the door because I see that a lady is walking and she needs to walk through before me. Hold the door because hey, that person has a bunch of stuff in their hands and they need help. That's service. Now the next is creativity. Creativity is the use of the imagination or original ideas, expressing the production of artistic work that allows us, the individual, to truly and freely express, express ourselves fully. So I threw creativity on here because uh, you're never gonna be like anybody else. You're never gonna be like anybody else because everybody is given unique gifts, everybody is given special abilities, and everybody has, and it's kind of like the law of vibration, it's another universal law, but everybody transmits their own signal out to the universe, okay? So you're not going to be like anybody. So you have to be creative. And like I said, life is about expression because what we see through our eyes is our world. And this is our masterpiece. We are a masterpiece of the creator of the universe. They shaped us, you know, informed us and put us here. Same with this entire, same with the tree outside, same with the oceans, same with the mountain. It's a masterpiece. And so your life is that. Your life is that masterpiece. You go out and you literally and you create. So Next is unity, the state of being united or jointed as a whole, despite the differences surrounding. We are devoted to one underlying cause. One underlying cause, unity. And I put this in here because um, if you get it and no one else does, this whole classroom fails. If everybody gets it in here, the whole classroom itself. So this is the same with the entire world. If there are a few people who do good, if there are a few people who do bad, collectively we can't do a thing. Unity, until we unify, will never go anywhere. So unity leads into the underlying cause. This is the common denominator of all things, love. Love is an intense feeling or deep connection to life. We are life, because we all are one. The tree is life, the plants are life. Everything is life because we all are connected. So, expand and revolve our lives around our gifts and our desires, not our desires. Expand and revolve your life around your gifts, not your desires, and bring out a new way of living. Because like you guys heard at the, for those of you who attended we day, but for those of you who didn't, I'll break it down. You are the future. And so why I like to speak in front of people is because I want to build role models for my children. So when I have children, they have somebody to look up to. Because most things, we don't, we don't want to give our parents credit for. Some people do, some people don't. Sometimes if your parents say something, you're like, yeah, yeah, dad, or mom, whatever. You know, but when you go hear it from somebody else, you're like, oh, you know, now I get what dad was saying. Now I get what mom was saying. Whatever. So you guys are going to be my kids. But in one way or another, you know, because if you, <coughs> you guys can probably look around the school and look at some of the direction that some kids lie with that. You can be like, oh, but those kids too have mentors. They too idolize somebody. That's why they're replicating their behavior. Nothing you're doing is, is of your own education. It's more so you saw it somewhere, you read it somewhere, you learned it somewhere, and it kind of shaped you, and it governs how you move, you know? So you're, you're in a sense emulating somebody imitating somebody, but you're not, you're putting your own unique spin on it. So, 
it works both ways. If there's good, there's evil. You know, if you think good, there's a bad thought there too. You know, but the, the control is up to us. So what I want to do with you guys is an activity. And what we're going to do in a second, we're going to stand up. And um, it's a game I learned. I attended a, a conference and I met this awesome lady. She was a she's a sex psychologist and she owns the Hattiesburg Clinic down in Mississippi. And it's the clinic that Tiger Woods attended when he was going through his whole little debacle. But so I met her and she was, she was super cool and uh, she made us all do an exercise. And so come here. And so what this exercise is, is all you're going to do, and for 30 seconds this is going to happen. So you're going to ask me, who are you? Who are you? Yeah, so oh, who are you? <laughs> I'm the speaker. seconds, you're literally going to be like, who are you? And that person will say, I am this. Who are you? I am that. Who are you? And then we'll switch. All right? Stand up. Get with someone you, you don't hang out with. Oh, someone you don't hang out with. Oh, someone you don't hang out with. Don't sit up. Don't sit up. decisions sometimes. You may make trouble sometimes. But that doesn't necessarily make you a troublemaker. Maybe you're a peacemaker. You just don't know how to really make peace. You know, so I'm sorry, I should. But, so, thank you guys again for allowing me to come and speak with you. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, I challenge you guys to go forward and discover yourselves. Truly discover yourselves. And serve and lead our world back in the right direction. Okay? And before, before I leave, I'm going to leave you guys with a lesson that I learned from a plant. But I 